Rachel. Well, we've seen a lot of video lately of the three of you at that press conference where you all were together holding up the jerseys. When you think back at that moment, when you bring stars together, it can go one way or the other. What was the process for the two of you and Ray to all come together and have it come to this moment as opposed to the other way around? I'm going to say the communication uh, from day one. You know, once we figured out Ray was coming, myself, KG was going to be there, we all talked uh, and talked about what we needed to do. And, that, and that's what really pretty much started. Then, second, we got the training camp sep uh, September. We all said, hey, let's, let's meet in September without the coaches and come together and just started playing with each other, starting to get to know one another. And I think, you know, all that stuff really helped us. But uh, the communication from the jump and, uh, you know, just kind of knowing each other uh, partially throughout our career, it just really helped us. Okay, Ken, I just take a from the defense. So you get in the middle of the season, then how'd you guys get back, get from everything you did during the regular season to this point in the playoffs? I think, I think we're, um, I'm, I'm, I'm going to add on to what Paul said, man. The communication between the three of us, you know, just the first day was, Phenomenal, man. You can tell that it was chemistry there. You know, three of us have been knowing each other throughout our all, all of our careers. Um, and it just hasn't been a high buy type of thing. You know, I've been knowing Paul since I was a kid, ready the same thing. They've been knowing each other for a while. And it was just brutally upfront conversation. <clears throat> we talked about scenarios. We talked about what we can be potentially. And then Doc, you know, later on, you know, added a more of a more structure and culture. And a mentor kind of uh, influence into it, but uh, for the most part, man, the three of us said that you know these guys are not going to follow if we don't give them a reason not to follow. And we came in and uh, we've been working since day one. You know, I can definitely say that that it has been a process. I mean, you guys see some of the finished product, but you know, we do debate and we do debate strongly. You know, but we consider ourselves very respectful of each other. Um, Three professionals that know that in order for this thing to work, we all had to, you know, give something up. And uh, I think we all not just talked about it, but we was we've been about it. We have the last two questions on this side. Uh, Steve Buckley, Boston Herald. Uh, Paul and Kevin, Celtics Lakers. Could you discuss what that means to you guys and what you think it means to Boston sports fans who are listening right now? It's about to be nuts, boy. Yeah, it means everything to Boston fans to me. Uh, I think that's what pretty much got me started in basketball. Growing up in Los Angeles, uh, watching the rivalry with the Lakers and Celtics. And it's ironic, you know, just being a Celtic, growing up, now you're playing against the Lakers in the finals. And as a kid, I hated the Celtics. <laughs> so, you know, I'm going back home to play against my team that I grew up watching. But it's a dream come true, man. I mean, just thinking about it, I think, you know, that rivalry really revolutionized the game of basketball, and now I'm a part of it. Steve, uh, last question. Uh, no. I mean, this is my first <laughs> first finals, my second, what, my, well, my third well, Lakers Celtic game. I'm looking forward to it, man. All the things I used to watch on Sunday, that big plate of food in front of me, watching uh, the Lakers, Lakers and Celtics play on Sunday. He'll be Brown and Dick Stockton doing the game. I remember that like it was yesterday, you know. Fire going, grab me a seat right in front of it. Mom telling me, don't get too close to the TV, it'll kill your eyes. <laughs> right. Right. I remember like it was yesterday, man. I'm looking forward to this. Bob Ryan, Boston Globe. Paul, you've been uh, with Rajan from day one. He made the biggest basket of the game tonight, back your last basket. Could you discuss the growing confidence everyone has had in him, watching him develop his, his entire game, but specifically his shooting? I mean, just for a guy who wasn't really heralded coming out as a lottery pick, uh, only in his second year, you know, I, I really didn't know too much about Rondo when we drafted him. But uh, just being around him, knowing that his, his hard work, his, his ability just to just stand up to the, to the veterans and, and not get rattled. I mean, he's come a long, long way in his maturity as a player. And that's just the work he's put in, and, and he's able to listen. I think that's the key for him. He listens to the guys, and he goes out there and puts the work in. And to just be in his second year, I mean, he's no longer a young guy, man. He's a, he's a, he's a grown-up veteran now. Steve Baltet, Boston Herald. Uh, P, you've been talking a lot lately about understanding how close you guys are to something that doesn't come along every day. Did you, it seemed like you come out in the fourth quarter with that kind of mindset. Did you take it to a different level 
coming into the fourth quarter like that? I think that was my mindset. You know, I was like, hey, this is 12 minutes. It's a tremendous opportunity, man. And I didn't want to let this slip away, man. It was right there. And Lord knows I didn't want to go back to Boston for another game seven. So, I mean, I just wanted to be a little more aggressive. But at the same time, be smart. Uh, you know, the shots were there. I was a little surprised at some of the open looks I got, the driving lanes. But, hey, I took advantage of it. And I, you know, I just wanted to try to impose my will, man. Just, you know, being in that position uh, six years ago and letting it slip away, I, I didn't want it to slip away again.